If you are buying a vehicle specifically to tow something heavy, a caravan, a boat, a horse float, a camper trailer, or perhaps even one of Kim Kardashian's considerably hefty buttocks. Well, I admit that's uncommon, yes. Possibly even unrealistic. I was merely editorialising. Okay, I'm terribly sorry. It will never happen again, guaranteed. Or perhaps you just seek to tow a trailer full of advanced solid state studio communication hardware. It's very heavy, but also oddly satisfying. Here's how you get that towing business right. For the love of Jesus, I was merely making a point that there's a diverse range of very, very heavy, large items that people might tow. <sighs> Misogynist predator. <laughs> Don't you think that's a bit strong? Do I look like Bill O'Reilly? I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Now, a plethora of you website up hitters on this, and I know that's not a word, are going to tow something, buying a vehicle to tow, and you ask me the wrong questions very often. You say, I intend to tow the Highway Sloth 2000 24-foot caravan. I will be towing the Bush Rooter 350 camper trailer. I intend to set sail in the Samuel Coleridge Ocean Master trailer sailor yacht. <laughs> you might have to look that one up. What vehicle should I buy? This is the question. So if that's you asking me this Fifty Shades of Grey Area towing question, you are thinking about this entirely wrong, wrongly, <laughs> wrongfully, with total negligent wrongness, whatever. The vehicle you buy does not care what in fact you are towing, it only cares about what it weighs. So this is what you must first determine, grasshopper. You need to know only two things here. Firstly, the maximum fully loaded weight of the trailer, in the example earlier, this would be the trailer loaded to the gunnels with KK's derriere. Don't start. Or, of course, the horse float carrying the GGs or the caravan loaded up with all of your stuff in the manner of you getting away from it all by taking it all with you. You need to know how much the trailered thingo weighs in its most heavily laden state. That's thing one, that you must know, or as Yoda would put it, know you must, thing one, that's it. And thing two is how much weight the trailer imposes on the tow ball in this most heavily laden condition. Thing one, fully loaded trailer, is often called the GTM for gross trailer mass, or the GVM of the trailer for gross vehicle mass of the trailer. And thing two is often called the static tow ball download. I would humbly suggest that the best way to know these things is by direct measurement. Unless, of course, that meteorite that hit you in the head as a child gave you strange mental powers. Every other way of, let's call it, knowing these loads is just indefensible bullshit. So load up all of your whatever into your whatever trailer. Uh, this means you put the horse or horses into the float, plus the saddles and whatever sundry B&D style accoutrement goes with them. Riding crop, spurs, I don't know, that stuff. Someone else doubtless has equestrianexpert.com.au. <laughs> Load your stuff, plus the water and the cutlery, the gas bottle, the inflatable sheep. I think that's a Kiwi thing, I'm told. Into your caravan, etc. Fully loaded, that is the idea here. And invoke Dr. Google. Search for a public weighbridge in your area. A big fat set of vehicle weighing scales that are hidden in plain sight. They're everywhere and yet nowhere. It's a paradox right there. Attend said weighbridge and weigh your trailer in two ways. First, 
drive onto the big public scales, decouple the trailer, drive off, leaving the trailer behind and weigh it. That's pretty simple. Number two, drive back on, recouple the trailer and drive just the vehicle off, leaving the trailer on the scales and coupled to the vehicle. This measures the weight of the trailer minus whatever load it's imposing on the tow ball, right? You subtract the second measurement from the first, and then, as if by reading the entrails of a goat after licking a cane toad, you will learn the static toe ball download. There's really no easy other way to do this. This all does seem like a lot of work, I'll admit, but it is absolutely essential because vehicle manufacturers impose these two critical load limits on whatever you tow. Number one, you can't tow anything heavier than the maximum towing capacity. And two, you can't tow anything that imposes a load on the tow ball heavier than the vehicle's static tow ball download limit. It's that simple. All you then need to do is choose a vehicle with those two load capacities on the heftier side of the weigh bridge measurements you have obtained. And you are sore-ed, as they say in spooks. Perhaps you are doing this the other way around. You have a vehicle and you are choosing an implement to tow with it. My strong advice here is refer to the trailer manufacturer's specs for the gross trailer mass and the tow ball download and ensure that these comply with your vehicle's limits. Then you load up your implement with all of your accoutrement or whatever, i.e. everything you intend to carry and then attend the weigh bridge and carry out the measurement described earlier. Just to make sure you are not actually overloaded, right? Do not exceed the trailer manufacturer's capacities here because overloading the trailer's axles is a very bad idea, even if this does not overload the vehicle doing the hauling. And make sure the vehicle's tow capacities are not exceeded once you have all your stuff aboard the trailer. Seriously, this is very bad to overload the vehicle because there are serious insurance and other legal implications if you do. And if you are subjected to a roadside check and weighed, you know, several hundred kilometres from home on the outskirts, perhaps, of West Bumsex, <laughs> surely that's not a real place, even in the Australian outback. I mean, it's a pretty diverse culture out there. I get that. However... Anyway, if you are weighed like that and determined to be overloaded by the weight police... Well, you won't be proceeding, will you, without ditching some of your stuff and that will stick in your craw. <laughs> Perhaps you could ditch the kids, maybe the wife, who knows? It might be a plus. And I'm not a lawyer, but if you knowingly tow something that's grossly overloaded and you crash and if somebody dies as a result, then there is a criminal offence on the books. It's called dangerous driving occasioning death, which carries a custodial sentence here in our wide brown cultural void, and that doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. One final warning on this before I let you go, and this pertains to the heaviest of heavy haulers, the 3.5 tonne hauling maximum KK Batokery trailer team. You know who you are. Many of these tow vehicles rated to tow 3.5 tonnes are in practice limited by other specifications, in particular the gross combination mass. That's the all-up weight of the vehicle plus the trailer, both loaded, driving down the road. And here's an interesting case study on that. The Ford Ranger FX4 dual cab 4x4 ute. 3.5 tonne tow capacity, allegedly. The curb weight of the range is 2,200 kilograms. That's the Ranger without you or your stuff. And the tow capacity is 3.5 tonnes. Add them together, 5,700 kilos. That's your fully loaded trailer coupled to your empty Ranger. Ford specifies a gross combination mass of 6,000 kilos maximum for the Ranger, and that means there's only 300 kilos you can add before exceeding the gross combination mass. And remember that this 300 kilos includes you and that special someone plus personal items in the vehicle, recovery gear, whatever, and it includes whatever accessories you might fit like a bull bar, a winch, a toolbox, dirt bike in the tray, whatever. 
you can see it's pretty easy to overload the vehicle. Hey, I'd be leaving the dog at home in this case. And personally, I'd also suggest that although it's technically possible to conform to the manufacturer's specs and tow three and a half tonnes with a Ranger or many similar utes that weigh in at just 2.2 or something, this doesn't mean doing that is a good idea. Personally, I tend to think two and a half tons is a good limit for these kinds of vehicles. There's a decent factor of safety in that. Two and a half tons is still quite a fair bit of boat, decent caravan, one cheek on the KK front. Three and a half tons is likely to be a living hell. It also kind of shocks me that you can get your license here in Shitsville, Australia, and spend the next five years driving the world's gayest Nissan Micra or something, and then win the lottos and drive off in a ute with a three and a half ton tow trailer behind it without any additional driver training. Look me in the eye and tell me that's a good idea. Heavy towing is a specialised driving experience, that's all I'm saying there, and extra training would be an excellent idea. Anyway, that's what you need to know if you're buying a vehicle for some heavy, heavy towing, some assignment that you have in mind. Make friends with your local Weybridge, measure twice and cut once on the vehicle selection front, otherwise mistakes can be so costly. After that, in the immortal words of contemporary transport philosopher C.W. McCall, yeah, we definitely got the front door, good buddy. Mercy sakes alive. <laughs> Looks like we got us a convoy. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.